You're listening to Bible Truth Feed, a podcast by Christadelphianvideo.org for Christadelphians and all those seeking the truth about the Bible message. Join us now as we present our latest episode. Well, good tonight. evening, everyone. Welcome to Family Matters Tonight. Um, tonight we have a really neat session with uh, about grandparenting with Ross and Wendy Mellies. So we'll be talking to them about grandparenting. Uh, grandparents are so important in the lives of their children. And Ross and Wendy have some great encouragement to share tonight. They're going to motivate grandparents to take up their roles as chief supporters for their children and grandchildren. And we're going to see how grandparents are one of the most solid and inspirational influences in the life of their children or their grandchildren, whether living close by or far away. So welcome, Ross and Wendy. It's really good to have you with us. Thank you. What we'll do is uh, just start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the family that you have given to us. Thank you for our children and our parents and our grandchildren and for all those that you've put into the families around us. We thank you for the influences that we can be on each other. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us to be godly influences for our children, that we might bring them up in, in a way that pleases you, in a way that, that helps them to help their children that all of them may dedicate their lives to you and grow to be part of your kingdom. And we pray that with all our heart, Heavenly Father. And so as we discuss tonight, we pray that you would give us the, um, the wisdom and the inspiration and, and the courage to do what's right and to fulfill our role as parents and grandparents. We ask this through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to do a quick reading just before we start from Prop, uh, from Psalm 78, verses 3 to 7. And um, we're sort of really cutting into it, but uh, it says, O people, hear my teaching. What we have heard and known, what our fathers have told us, we will not hide them from their children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. He decreed, he decreed statutes for Jacob. He established the law in Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. And they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. And I just thought that was a really appropriate way to, uh, to, to um, introduce us to the, to the topic of grandparenting, because grandparenting really is one of those, um, those, those big influential, influential, let's get that right, those big influ, let's, let's try a different word completely. <laughs> Yes, yes, that word. <laughs> um, it's, it's one of those yeah, influential, say it again, um, ways you know that that are it's really powerful in our children and our grandchildren's lives. Um, so yeah, but before we start, just tell us a little bit about your children and your grandchildren, your family. Um, what what how many have you got in your family and, and so grandchildren and so on? So that's a question which I'm gonna I'm gonna turn over to Wendy. She's um she's really good at answering that. Yeah. So so of whom are we grandparents? Oh, so um we have four living in New Zealand and two in Australia. We have Zippy, Arwen, Hoshia, and Yesenia, and in New Zealand, and Leo and um. Emory in Australia almost um, you're right, what's, just, the age, what's the age range you're, you're looking at? Um, Zippy's uh, uh, 10 almost 11 and um, Emory's just turned one so 
between that. That's spread out between yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Seven, eight age range, really. Yeah, and it's lovely. Yeah. yeah. And, and still relatively young in the in the scheme of things. Still relatively yeah. young. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, not, it's not about to be young great grandparents in the next couple of minutes. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, you know. What do they call you? What do they call you? Uh, you they know, call us Mita and Poppy. So, Sorry. Wendy is Mita from Mamita, which is Spanish, and I'm Popsy from Popsy, which is just pop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and which, which shows that, you know, really what they call you just becomes a kind of a, almost just a label. And, you know, the name, the name is just a symbol for like everything they know about you. Yeah. 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 Just neat. So you've had experience of both close by grandparenting and more remote grandparenting. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what each of those have looked for, like for you? Well, we're we're in a fortunate situation where where we've got you know electronic communication, which which a lot of people haven't had in the past, and so that means that you've got this this kind of um, uh, promise of 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 regular and almost instantaneous communication. But on the other hand, it, it almost promises more than it delivers because um, it's not a real, it's not a real kind of physical presence, and yet it kind of mm. almost pretends to be. It, it not, you know, not that it's something I would, I would, you know, we, we use it all the time. But it's just, um, it's, it's. There's nothing like seeing their faces and seeing their smiles. Yeah, you know, when yeah. they see that it's yeah. you on the phone yeah, yeah. and they yeah. they smile, and there's nothing like that. But there's, it's also not a, um, I guess it's a really heartbreaking thing, actually, because you're not yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of every communication, yeah. you're you're sort of like you you do feel like the la the lot the the distance. Yes. And you can't give a hug over Zoom. No. 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 And, and no. it's really not the same talking to them either. It's like I mean, you know, when you're talking to adults, it's actually really hard sometimes. It's just so different when you're face to face. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so, um, so obviously, in preference to be able to be close by is, is by far the, the preferred sort of way, I guess, but. Yeah. 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 Definitely. You can't, you know, there, 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 although there's restrictions to distance, it doesn't mean that that your role as grandparents stops either. No, and and you can still have a relationship through distance. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't I, it doesn't kill the relationship. I think no, it's really good being. being sorry, so uh, you you go. It, it just may take a little more work, perhaps. It does. Yeah. yeah. I I just I was just going to say I think it's always good to have uh, some some period of time if you can at all and i know that's not always possible but if you can a period of time when you are actually in each other's presence you know physically yeah. uh, in each other's presence because there's a lot of nuances to that 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 you just don't get over over um, you know skype or zoom or whatever uh and and you know it it uh and that especially goes with kids yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. and and um, I mean, one of the things about grandparenting is that is that grandparents have time. Um, yeah. Whereas true. parents are often real busy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And grandparents can sometimes just fill those gaps, you know, where parents are really busy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I so think how have that... you been able to do that? Like, you know, you, I mean, you've probably you've got children your own children that are working and busy parenting and stuff, you've been able to sort of step into the gap there and, and I don't know, read stories and yeah, you know, and take kids to school or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and just being there sometimes is just enough to remove the child so that the mother can get on with what they need to get on with. And yeah. I, and I think that that's that's maybe perpetuating a, a like an ancient uh, kind of um, right where where 
you know, um, villages, you know, in, in Old Testament times, for example, or, or ancient Israel and so on, where they had that whole, the whole family was uh, sort of around um, and where it was an intergenerational thing and where children learned that it was quite a normal thing to, to have older and younger people around and kind of siblings, grandparents and the whole family and, and, and kind of extended family as well, that they were all involved in the, in the kind of the process, the, the, you know, process of creating a kind of a, uh, family and I think that kind of you, you can see that going down through through Israel's history when you know uh, it, it was a natural thing to have older people there and I think that our society has mm. almost um, kind of set that aside in favor of just young people being together or just old people being together um, yeah and, and it's an unnatural thing and I think it's an actually you know, if I can say this, it's actually an unhealthy thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So you spent the last few years um, in close proximity to your Australian grandchildren. And what does that look like on a, on a weekly basis? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, Ross didn't see them that much, but I saw them every day because I went to the cafe and, and looked after them and um, while well, Yana did something, and then while we worked for Chloe in the cafe, they would come out and help us strip flowers and things, you know, so we were constantly, um, constantly there. But it was kind of a, I would say it was a very unique position for me, <laughs> um, if, what, what, we, what I was doing and what they, you know, being able to be there all the time for them, yeah. Yes. I, think, I think children, you know, need not need to, they, they, they can be conscious of this fact that that often older people um grandparents specifically uh would like to be included in in just day-to-day -day life so some don't and some you know some get annoyed at that i know but but uh, in, in our case it was um something that we kind of we welcomed being involved in, in the kind yes. of the day-to-day uh existence of a family mm. is you know is is a it, it, it's it's a two-way thing both the grandparents can help the young people but also it gives the grandparents relevance uh too which is which is often to be useful uh, to be useful yeah. and i think that that's something that that again that our our society is kind of like it, it, it doesn't it downplays that kind of you know that irrelevance of older people uh, is quite a common thing these days. Yeah. 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 Um, and you said the other day, actually, Ross, when we were talking, that uh, grandparents are are the glue that holds the ecclesial family together. Just just while we're on that topic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate yeah. on that a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> Off you go. Yeah. Yeah. So so. So there's, and I guess it comes back to my comment before about the kind of the the kind of the natural, um, you know, you know, more ancient kind of styles of parenting that we, we're very firmly um, firmly believers in that um, idea that there's an intergenerational um, uh, relationship there with grandparents and grandchildren uh, that 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 is that what it does is it channels to worlds really are uh, contemporary world you know with the young people and an older world with you know two or three generations ago and what that does is it kind of it provides this that that there's a channel between them and that holds those two say groups together the grandchildren and the grandparents uh, you know by means of the parents kind of like facilitating that and allowing that and encouraging that 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 brings those two kind of um, those two groups that are separated by age and, and very much separated by context. It, it brings that together. And, and I think it's, you, you see that in an, ecclesi an ecclesia that is overly obsessed with young people or becomes completely obsessed with just its old people because all the young people leave or whatever. It does look like a, a, a slightly unbalanced and a slightly wonky ecclesia. Yeah, yeah. 
and yeah. yeah, and so grandparents bring that together. Yeah, I, it, that's that's a really neat point. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Wendy, um, I have a question for you. As you become a grandparent, like you know, your you, you kids have a uh, your, your son or your daughter has a a spouse and a baby, and um, and you become a grandparent. What did you find there were there were boundaries that you had to put in place? You know, there's there's things you you want to do with the kids or you don't want to do with the kids or or they want you to do or don't want you to do or discipline or you know what sort of boundaries have you found as as far as a grandparent goes? <laughs> um, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a nice <laughs> medical question there, Robert. Right? Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's something you have to work on, I think. As a grandparent, you have to work on your your first instinct is to go in and manage everything. Um, but you have to really teach yourself to stand back and let the kids handle it, you know. And, and I think half of you also knows when uh, a parent is disciplining a child that you know that actually, you know, you kind of, you want to help. You want to help the child, but you also know that um, that that it's not going to be a big thing in the bigger picture of things. The little small amount of disciplining is not going to be a big thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's easier as a grandparent to step back and let it happen. But sometimes you do want to leap in and tell them what to do. But as a, I, I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> I think it's a really it's good for the kids to find their own ways to to manage their families. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Some sometimes I think you can you can talk to them, but I, I based on some of my experiences, it's better to wait until after the issue the has heat the, the heat the heat the heat heat moment, moment, yeah, moment has gone. Yeah, at a different time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. <laughs> and and, um, and yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say, and and often we we have a slightly different we'll ha we will have a slightly different style of parenting to our kids, and mm. um, you know, as as funny as that may seem, uh, but we often will be managing it and getting you're going to the same you're going to the same point. You want to achieve the same outcomes, and sometimes you just have to let uh, your kids find their way through whatever that situation and that's actually a part of God's uh you, you know God's chastening that that it's the working through of a problem that actually you find a lot of the value in it it's not so much just coming up with solutions like you know the dinging on my phone that you heard just a minute ago that's it's not so much the solutions it's more the working through to the solution that teaches you a lot when you jump in and you want to save everything and save the day with your, you know, wise counsel of this or that, you're actually circumventing that process. That's a really good point. Yeah. 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 And, and it is hard, even even as a parent. I know for myself, I'm wanting, I'm wanting to, you know, save a bit of thing or a bit of going the long yeah. route around by, by, you know, so do it this way. Yeah, do it this way. things yeah. to learn in the meantime. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Sometimes yeah. It's, it's the journey to a certain point that, as you say, you learn a lot more through. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So you, when we were chatting previously, you talked about, you know, having a great relationship with your, with your children and you were able to answer the question about, what your role should look like and how did you sort of go about that and, and what their expectations were of, of how you would treat the children i don't think there's a kind well in our, we can only speak in our case yeah, well, and, yeah and, and in our case we didn't we didn't um wendy and i will obviously speak but um you know sometimes sometimes you know, some of your kids will will basically bite your head off if you tread to, you know, <laughs> stick your head up too high. Um, and um, and what you do is you learn to just bite your lip. Um, so you learn learn by experience. Um, but um, but I think, pardon me, that 
Um, it's it's often it's being there, and it's not necessarily it's just being there. It's the it's your presence uh, in the moment, in the problem, in the so, space. So I think think um, might be suggesting that. Are you talking about when when we talked about you know the disciplining and and if are you talking about that point thing? Yeah, and and um, being able to speak to your children about what their expectations right. were, how right. you think, would how would you would deal with their children? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah so I did have I, I remember having that discussion with Shay. And, oh, we do that all the time. No, no, and, and say so, no, no, no. The, the discussion about. You know, if if I was caught in this position, yeah, you know, yeah. are you happy if I discipline yeah, yeah. Zippy like this because of yeah. you know that sort of thing? And and she she was happy with that, yeah. But but we'd never been actually had to do anything, but um, we did have that discussion. You know that you know like, like for example, a child running across a road or something like that, and and you're the only one there, and and do you <laughs> deal with it, and how do you deal with it, and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, we don't have that discussion. Mind you, I have to put a caveat on that too, that we can only speak from our own situation and we mm. have always raised our family in a very kind of open, you know, to a fault actually, but a very open kind of um, uh, expressive kind of um, relationship. So in other words, what I'm saying, I guess, is it's natural for us to have these conversations Whereas you might find in another family, which maybe isn't comfortable with that, that, that they have to do that in other ways. But we can only really say from you know our own point of view, we we kind of like to get it, just get it out there. Just this is what I'm thinking right now, and what do you think about such and such? How would you you know do deal with this? And to not be challenged by that uh, is, is a really is a help, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just just changing the subject slightly. Still on brand parenting, obviously. But um, what what would you say? How would you define the role of a grandparent? <laughs> that's a good. That's a good. Uh, I would say if if there was one word that that just off the top of my head right now, I would use say, a sentence if you like. But you know. <laughs> I'm I'm, well, I'm going to I'm going to say context. A grandparent provides context over generations, over experience, and over time. And uh, also, a grandparent provides stability. I, I would say mm. that um, that that I would see my role as someone who is. Um, I guess in a way supporting the parents, but also being um, a confident um, and also being a fun person or just just someone who's always there, as you say, stability. Yeah, mm -hmm. stability mm -hmm. and 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 kind of like the person who loves unconditionally, really, because that's what a grandparent yeah. does. It doesn't matter what the grandchildren oh, do, you, just, yeah. you will just love them. Your heart just them. melts when you see yeah. your kids. The, yeah. you know, yeah. When you see your grandkids, your heart's just absolutely... I, I, and I think I think grandchildren know that, yeah. and they, they yeah. see the difference between you and the parents. And there's yeah. a, there's, a, there's um, an older brother that we, we know, and um, some of you will know, um, I'm not going to mention, but um, I will. What I will say is, I remember him looking at a photo of his grandchild, and he just groaned. You know, he was so in love with this little kid, and that's pretty much that. It's it's almost love with no strings attached. Whereas when you're in the moment as a parent, there's lots and lots of strings attached. Uh, it's about paying for the school fees. It's about what the kid has just done. He's broken a cup. She's, you know, spilt water or whatever. It's it's all about the mo it's much more in the moment, and it's much harder to express your love for the kid. Whereas a grandparent can is is by nature of who they are and where they are in relation to the society to the family, they 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 are stepping back slightly, and they're just having that experience of loving the kid yeah which is which is what really provides some of that stability because there's no exactly. 
the, the, you know, they're not in the heat of the moment. They're not, exactly. they're not, they're not fired up with those emotions that's that, exactly. um, that's that the exactly. parents are fired up with and the, yeah, yeah. Can, so, can yeah, I, I like that. Can I um, add in something here that I know we talked about the other night, Robert and Sharon, when yeah. we were going over this? And I, I do think, and I would put out this this point that, that, and I'm speaking now partly as a grandparent and partly as as an educator too. Uh, kids, I don't care what society you're talking about. Kids, uh, there's a there's an idea uh, once a philosopher called Rousseau had had that. You know uh, that that children are, a, he said, a tabula rasa, an empty slate. And I see so many kids who look to adults to create some sort of a template, some sort of a, a bit of organisation for them to then attach themselves to. And this is completely in, in line with what Christ told us about children, and you know, and believers, and. Our children today are struggling to have these kind of like these these markers, these 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 milestones, these these kind of kind of these the bedrock that they can they that they can then go on confidently into their lives with, and they're looking for it. And we as parents and we as grandparents must be providing that, must be providing those those. You know those kind of touchstones uh, in terms of just being constant, being there, examples, unconditionally, yeah, examples, unconditionally loving, showing our faith, showing our faith in them uh, and in other people. These sorts of patterns are the bedrock that I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, how would you go? How do you go about sh sharing faith with grandchildren? Sharing your faith with grandchildren. Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess you just talk about it, you know, it's to, it's in everything that you do, you know, uh, <coughs> God is in everything, so it just becomes part of your vocabulary to your grandchildren. Yeah, you know, you you go for a walk, you pick out all the things and you talk about what God made, um, talk about the animals that, you know, it's, it's just part of, I think, I think, I don't think you ever have to sit down and give them a little lecture. I think they just, um, they see in the way you behave and what you talk about, um, they just see that in you and that, um, your faith has got to be a part of your conversation. Yeah, of yeah. Your just everyday life. It's got, they've just got to see that it's just interwoven in what you do and say and think. It's it and and you it's do that by sprinkling sprinkling your day mm -hmm. with, you know, just a kind of a a God centered way of talking. So you don't you don't sit down and say, okay, now I'm going to give you a lesson about God. Yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah, you it, might do that. You no, might, but you, you don't. Do that, you don't. It's about. Well, we never did. It's intertwined <laughs> into every part. Of you. It's intertwined into every part of every your life. Every part of your life. Yeah. yeah. It's not a. And, um, yeah. And that can it's happen in so many ways. That, I mean, that, 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 that would be caught more than taught, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And Wendy and I would never. We were never explicit in that sort of thing. Although we were always quite, it was always quite, it was always there. I mean, we were going on mission work, we were doing no, no, this. No, you're talking about kids or grandkids. Grand, it's, sorry, kids. I'm kind of like blurring the line there, but but with our grandkids, um, uh, I think I think that um, what we what we did was, or what we do, sorry, is um, it's just an obvious thing that you're always uh, bringing out some sort of a Bible centered. Um, explanation for something uh, in a story, uh, in an example, in anything like that. There's a focus that you show them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. I, I know, like Sharon's grand grandmother used to used to uh, get get her grandkids up early in the morning <laughs> and watch the sunrise. And yeah. you know, yeah, it's a, yeah. a great example of you know. Look at the creation that God's given you. 
Yeah. 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 Mm. And I I think that as a grandparent, you know, as you get older, you appreciate a lot of that sort of thing more. And so that's what you want to give to your grandchildren because Mm. you're older and you see it. Yeah. Yeah. And and grandchildren are probably a lot more appreciative of, of it from their grandparents than they are from mum and dad. You know, like, why are you waking me up this early in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> why would you disturb my sleep for that, you know? But a grandparent, yeah. oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. 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 They see you differently, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. True. And you make up, you make up, I know we, we talked about this the other day, you make up stories as well. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, we're going to ask you about that. Yeah, so I've got, so I've got a, and I know other people will have their own versions of things. I've got Mrs. Googe, and Mrs. Googe gets herself into a lot of trouble in a lot of different ways. But it'll be sometimes it'll be like a Bible story. Uh, it, it, uh, often it will be just what's happened. Um, but you can bring out sort of like. It, it becomes a lot easier to ramble the older you get, and particularly for the mother. <laughs> <laughs> you'd always be good at that, Ross. <laughs> well, I was starting from a high point, but I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think I think these sorts of. Uh, Let's put you on the spot again. Do you want to give us a, a two-minute Mrs. Goose story? No. <laughs> well, you see, Mrs. Gooch, Mrs. Gooch was, she was, um, she had a computer and um, uh, there's a whole bunch of people who wanted to talk to her about the last time that she was, um, uh, that she had uh, tried to fly because the last time she tried to fly, she made her own uh, plane and she'd looked in a, uh, she'd looked on the back of a Kellogg's packet and there on the back of a Kellogg's packet was a biplane. And Mrs. Googe thought that you made the biplane out of Kellogg's packets. So when she'd eaten enough cornflakes, she actually cut up the cardboard and tried to make an aeroplane. But unfortunately, well, fortunately for her, she jumped off a two-story building and didn't hurt herself too much. And so the story would go on, and I'm not going to continue. <laughs> okay, there you go. Very good. <laughs> but you were all you were all drawn in. Yeah, I'm totally. I, I want to know what I want to know what happened next. <laughs> uh, um, can you? Would you give any advice to grandparents who are trying to navigate the way with? Um, children who and grandchildren that haven't embraced their own faith. Right. So, um, do you want to say anything, Wendy? I'd say tread carefully. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Tread carefully, and uh, I mean, I don't know because I've never been there, but um, I would imagine a little bit at a time is better than going in full throttle. I think. Um, and yeah. Mm. But yeah, I think. I think what these kids are often lacking uh, in their lives is some sort of, and, and this I guess goes back to my comment before about the bedrock, uh, providing bedrock in, in kids' lives. And I guess uh, what I would say is these kids are often, often, not always, but often lacking a kind of a bedrock, any sense of like a regular thing that they do or a regular point that a conversation will always go to or comments that will always come up, like, you know, God made the world or things like that. And that uh, you as a grandparent, you can provide something that might be a really, there might be a really chaotic situation in the home life uh, or, 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 you know, or not, but often there is. And you are there as a kind of a, a you're providing a, a bit of stability. And if you can wrap that stability around biblical principles, even better. Sometimes it can be explicit. Mm. Sometimes it needs to be implicit. You don't always have to come up with answers. You don't always have to come up with kind of like explicit things to say about how they should believe in God and the kingdom and all the rest of it. But your answers to things can actually lead to that anyway, in an implicit way. But the you main- You also teach morals in a way that- That's right. 
That's yeah. right, yeah. And a biblical without necessarily saying these are from God, you know. And, yeah. Yeah. and so, yeah, you're there to provide stability in what, and, and I think that it's more often than we realise that it's, it's, it's chaos on one side because I think that a lot of kids are living in a, almost a chaotic, unpredictable, unreliable uh, life and you can provide order, some sort of order, some sort of answer to something, you know, some sort yeah. of stability. And yeah. I, I don't know whether that makes sense, but yeah. Yeah, I think another thing grandparents can do as well is pray for their grandchildren. Yes. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. We all do that. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, we we you do that just so naturally. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you don't even think of it. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And pray with your grandchildren too. True. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Mm. So there's there's got to be highlights of being a grandparent, and we're not we're not that yet. So you got any you got any highlights that you'd like like to share? You can give them lots of lollies. <laughs> lollies? <laughs> what, they give you lollies? <laughs> well, what, I have a fun story. One of the best highlights was when um, Shay took Zippy to the beach and she said um, that she must have been about three and she said, oh, um, you know, talking about creation and that God created the, um, the beach and the world. And Zippy said, no. No, Meter and Popsy created it. Not God. Meter and Popsy. <laughs> oh, that'll make you feel old. But that's that's a beautiful example mm. of that that big rock that you that you were um, alluding to earlier, that there was obviously that sense there that she could pick yeah. up to yeah. know that her grandparents had a great deal of influence in her life. Yeah. 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 Always been yeah. there and always will be yeah. there. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 And and that that it's interesting too that that sort of thing happens without you even knowing that it's happening. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just yeah. by being there. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, that's really lovely. Yeah. And God willing, we believe that um, in the not too distant future, you will get to spend a bit more time with your New Zealand grandchildren. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. then, yeah, yeah, you'll be uh, you'll be dropping yeah. things over a little bit. So that'll be yeah. yeah. Getting getting new work stories and all that sort of stuff. So that'll be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. The best, the best times actually are when they all crawl into bed with you in the morning, first thing in the morning, you know, about half past five, six o'clock. Just love it. <laughs> That's my best time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You get yeah. these little bodies and yeah, they just um they just want to be there with you. Yeah, and they put the pattern yeah. down every morning. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. When they're two, they're often with a uh, full nappy as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that. Then you're awake now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Is, that a, is that a good moment for Mrs. Gooch? Yeah. Yeah. No, those those are the memories, and I certainly know my father was fantastic do, at doing stories. His, his was about bumblebees, um, and they always had a, had a little moral moral story to it. And all his children and grandchildren had always had always loved his mm. stories and would always ask for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. really nice. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. So these are these are things that the children do remember and take with them into yeah. the future. Yeah. Um, yeah. A anything that you'd say about your own experiences from uh, as as growing up with your own parents, grandparents? Yeah, definitely. I I think I I I've got solid memories of my grandparents and their stories and the things that you know they said. 
and yeah, I, do, I just have this, so I guess it, you call it a, a solid, stable memory of um, that they loved us and that we were part of their lives, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Actually, that's, yeah, that's a really interesting, that's a really interesting point because in, in our case, um, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> my own background is not, is it's probably not the same as Wendy's and in a way her family provided me with a certain amount of what I probably hadn't had in the past. Okay. So it's, yeah. a good, it's a good example of where two quite different kind of families can come together, you know, and, and you can uh, almost uh, substitute uh, some of the some of the gaps by by a more a, a wider sense of what a family is. Yes, yeah. which yeah. Leads, to a good, leads to a good point that we can become surrogate have grandparents. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. It doesn't have to be your own. You don't have to have your own blood to you know within the ecclesia. I think if there's someone that's missing a grandparent or a parent in their lives, then you can become that. Um, yeah. You don't have to, and, and you haven't got children around you, then you can be what they need and, and they can supply to you what you need. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's what's wonderful about ecclesias is that we can do that. Yeah. I think we can underestimate and almost um, not, well, not know even that we're becoming a part of the fabric of a growing child's life you know the making of a life you know and these memories they're not just memories but they're kind of points where you know there's an influence here and there and the next one and the next one and so on and they're little pinpricks in a, in a kind of a, a person's makeup and each one of them kind of makes up this big long kind of tapestry of, of a life and and so when we're providing provo a, a, um, positive you know, roles and 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 examples and and being you know that stability and so on. We're actually helping that tapestry, you know, hold together in a much stronger yeah. way. And so, and and what we're doing actually is we're making the next generation uh, of, it's much stronger because they're actually they're standing on or they're standing in a certain place, you know. Uh, yes. Whereas a lot of in our in um, a lot of helicopter parenting that you see nowadays, which is an expression that, you know, for those parents who kind of jump in and try and do everything for the child at the last minute, but are never there when, when the, you know, everything's unfolding. Uh, a lot of the kind of like the, the uh, over, over perhaps smothering kind of thing, that, that actually produces uh, uncertain, hesitant, nervous children because, what happens when they're not there so yeah 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 well i love the i love the picture you've built up you know in my mind i just see a lovely extended family picture and it just gives a beautiful picture of what grandparents can put into the fabric of a child's life and you know and how they can be there as support people for their own mm. children and just yeah. create a much bigger fuller picture yeah. that might otherwise be missing yeah 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 so yeah, yeah. that's beautiful thank you it's really neat so what, what last question well probably last question miss sharon's got more <laughs> <laughs> um, but what what advice would you give for grandparents who who really want to you know like after hearing you tonight want to step up um you know what encouragement have you got for a grandparent who wants to step up and sort of really get involved, perhaps more so than what they've done before, um, and and be a really great influence, a godly influence on on the lives of their grand grandchildren. I mean, you know, you read through um, through the letter to Timothy. You know, the faith that once dwelt with your mother Lois and your grandmother Eunice is obviously that, that really powerful influence of, yeah. of Timothy's grandmother there. Yeah. So, you got any real encouragement there that you can give to, uh, to to grandparents? Just be there, I think. Just yeah. be there for yeah. them, yeah, yeah. Um, and be part of their lives. You know, just just get. I, I think you've got to be careful that you don't um, 
smother <laughs> your your children when you're wanting to be with the grandchildren if you get what i mean um that you that, that you 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 don't step in and take over but you can still be there for them without doing that yeah i think it goes two ways and i think uh for grandparents it starts you, you know if you think to yourself well uh i haven't had that um how do i how do i do that the best place to start is just with honestly saying to kids, uh, you know, I'd like to do this. Mm. And uh, just stepping through that process uh, in a way that they don't feel too challenged by, if it hasn't happened up to that point, just that they don't feel challenged by it, but at the same time, you actually feel like you're getting somewhere. But you've got to start. <laughs> You've got to start that it's no good thinking you know it's no good thinking about being the world's greatest grandparent you are you are the grandparent you are by what you do not by what you think or what you want yep. to be it's it's by what you do and and that's at the cutting edge of it and so if that's the case which it is then you've got to actually start somewhere and if you don't, if you're just always thinking about it and never say anything to to your kids about what you would like, then you're going to find that you actually get nowhere. Um, yeah, that's so, a good point. Yeah, I think a grandparent is also a grandparent by who they are as well. My, I had four very different grandparents, and. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, you love them for who they are as opposed they to are, you know, right. as much as for what they do. Yeah. It's a really for good, just being the grandparents. Yeah. It's yeah. a really good analogy actually of uh, I think of uh, it's a metaphor for love. It, well it is love. It's it's love, but it's it's you love unconditionally and you love the person for who they are, not for who you want them to be. And I think that's a really, you know, and that goes both ways. Um, it goes backwards and forwards. It goes back for the grandparents and it goes for the for the children and the grandchildren. Um, you love them, un, uh, you know, without any strings. And you can see, actually, we can take an example from the kids. The kids love their grandparents when their grandparents are there and around and so on because they're there. Not because they're someone else, but because they are who they are. And, and yeah. there is one thing too, I know, like just from our own experience, that sometimes your parents or your in laws will do something that really annoys you. The kids don't see that. They just see someone who loves them. They don't see the little things that we see that annoy annoyed us, you know, but they, our kids, just saw their grandparents as someone who loved them. So, None of those things ever annoyed them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was never a problem. <laughs> never a yeah. 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 And I suppose that's the thing. At the end of the day, a grandchild can give their grandparents back and say, "Go home," and a grand and a grandparent can can send the child home and say, "Go home," yeah. and uh, <laughs> you don't have to be irritated yeah. for the rest of your life, yeah. all in one house. So. <laughs> You can have the kids for a day, you can hype them yeah. up as much as you like, and then you can give them home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. At least you're staying on site. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's right. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. thank you so much for joining us tonight. We've really oh, enjoyed this discussion. It's been, it's been really inspiring. Um, looking forward to being grandparents ourselves one day. Yeah. <laughs> for the moment but that's all right <laughs> hey, Cher, i will um, say that oh can i just say someone once told me that um being a grandparent is the best thing in the world and until you are you actually don't realize just how wonderful it is <laughs> it's just right. the best thing ever yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. a very very privileged position yeah <laughs> absolutely yeah Okay, for the uh, in, in the next couple of weeks uh, or few weeks, we have um, a family matters in two weeks' time. Um, we haven't got 
uh, uh, we're, we're just waiting for a confirmation on that one. So it's to be confirmed. But if you want to know what it is, as soon as the news comes out, I will send you an email if you're on our emailing list. Um, if you're not, email me, robert at thinkythings.com and say what's on Family Matters and I will let you know. Um, and I'll add you to that email list. Um, also, if you want to see this again, if you want to review this, rewind and hear it again, you can find it on the uh, Pickering and Chris Delphi website. And there are a whole lot of other Family Matters uh, videos you can watch there as well. Um, so yeah, finally, uh, let's just ask Ross, would you mind closing with a word of prayer, please? Yeah, sure. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you now and we thank you for our time together tonight. When we've been able to consider the things which come from our families in your name, we know that you have provided us this wonderful relationship that we have uh, between the generations and that, that, that we have within that, we have responsibilities to one another responsibilities to show the same love that you showed to all your children and most especially you showed through your son and we know that he is our example we pray that we may be an example to those around as we look to him and we endeavor to put those lessons which we see in his life into practice with each other help us to be honest help us to be true help us to be faithful to what we really do believe and help us to express ourselves in ways that don't offend but that draw those around us towards us and we pray that you'll help us to be a strength to all those generations down through the ages who seek you as we do we ask this prayer through christ jesus amen Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the episode helpful. Don't forget, most of these episodes are also available as videos on our video channel, cdvideo.org. So head over and take a look. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please get in touch or leave us a voice message. We love to hear your feedback. You can email us at bt f at cdvideo.org. If you enjoyed the episode, then please share it with others. Until next time, may God bless you in your studies and your walk towards God's kingdom. Amen.